Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ala mabar ayyullah habitifillah Continuing on in our study of Arba'een al-Nawawi by Imam al-Nawawi rahimahullah ta'ala by Fadilat al-Shaykh al-Doktor Sa'ad ibn Sa'id al-Hajari hafadullah ta'ala We reach the fourth hadith, the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam عن أبي عبد الرحمن عبد الله بن مسعود رضي الله تعالى عنه قال حدثنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم هو صادق المصدوق إن أهلكم يجمع خلقه في بطن أمه أربعين يوم نطفة ثم يكون علقة مثل ذلك ثم يكون مضغة مثل ذلك ثم يرسل إليه الملك فينفخ فيه الروح ويؤمر بأربع كلمات بكتب رزقه وأجله وعمله وشكي صعيب فوالله الذي لا إله إلا غيره إن أهدكم ليعملوا بعمل أهل الجنة حتى ما يكون بينه وبينها ذراع فيسبك عليه الكتاب فيعمل بعمل أهل النار فيرخلها وإن أهلكم ليعملوا بعمل أهل النار حتى ما يكون بينه وبينها ذراع فيسبك عليه الكتاب فيعمل بعمل أهل الجنة فيرخلها فيرخلها رواه بخاري ومسلم in this hadith, uh, the hadith of Abi Abdurrahman Abdullah bin Mas'ud, radiallahu ta'ala'in. He said that the Prophet of Allah, the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, related to us and wahuwa sadiq al masduq, meaning that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was truthful in his speech and did not lie. And he is masduq, that he was believed by other than him. Even the non-Muslims believed that the Prophet والسلام, was truthful when they described him والسلام. And he وسلم, said, Inna ahadakum yujma'u khalqahu fi batni ummihi arba'in yawman. He said, verily one of you uh, Or verily, you are brought together in the stomach of your mother. Forty days. Nutfa. Nutfatin. Thumma yukun alakatin mithladarik. Then there will be a blood clot. <coughs> mithladarik, meaning forty days. Then they will be like a morsel of flesh for 40 days. So that shows us the term uh, 40 and 40 and 40. That's 120 days. Then an angel is sent to sent to him. Or sent sent to the to the to the to the woman who's pregnant. فَيُنْفِخُ فِيهِ الرُّوحِ And it blows into this mudra, this morsel of flesh, a soul. So after 120 days, Islamically, that the, what is contained in the, uh, the womb of a woman uh, <clears throat> it receives a soul after 120 days. وَيُؤْمَرُوا بِأَرْبَعَ كَلِمَاتِ And then it, uh, four thing, it commands four things. Or it is commanded four things. To write the baby's uh, risk, you know, their wealth and provisions that they will receive in this life, wa ajlihi, their term of living, wa amalihi, and the deeds that they would do, and whether they're happy or 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 sad, 
Then he said, by Allah, the one who for Allah the la ilaha illa the by Allah the one who is worthy the only one worthy of worship and there is none worthy of worship other than him. Verily, one of you will do the deeds of the people of paradise until. What is between him and paradise is an arm span. Then what was written will overtake him and he will do the deeds of the people of the hellfire and enter it. And verily one of you will do the deeds of the people of the hellfire until what is between them is a hand span between them and the fire and what was written will overcome them and they will do the deeds of the people of Jannah and they will enter it. And this is related in Bukhari and Muslim. Ahabatifillah, we're just going to go just to the benefits of this hadith that the Shaykh mentioned. One of the important fawa'id of this hadith is the importance of dhabt in narrating, uh, of having precision in, in narration and this was the way Ahl hadith transmitted hadith up to the Prophet wasallam by having the isnad, the chain of narrations and the narrators and them having precision in this. So this is one of the benefits of this hadith Another benefit of this hadith is showing the love of the Sahaba and that they held the Prophet in the highest esteem Also this hadith clarifies for us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone is the creator of the heavens and earth and the creator of us and the creator of our rizq and this also illustrates the qudratillah ta'ala upon, uh, over everything that Allah has the power in the might the full power subhanahu wa ta'ala and he's omnipotent and he is the creator of the heavens and earth. He's the creator of everything. Also, this hadith shows us the various stages that a, a human being goes through from, uh, that leading to their birth. And this hadith also shows us the importance of being, that it's an obligation. Not just showing us the importance, but that it's an obligation of being humble in, and uh, having humility and that it's impermissible and haram to be arrogant. Why? Because all of us were created in this, in this fashion and we all came from the mixing of the fluids, uh, a woman's egg and a man's sperm. All of us came from that. Akramakum Allah. And we went through those stages of being weak and, and dependent. And on top of that, this teaches us humility because we don't know our ending. We're believers now, bi'idnillah ta'ala, but we don't know how our death, how we will meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Will we remain on khair for those people who are doing good deeds? Or will some, the, the shaitan and their shubahat or the shahwat overtake them before they die and they will do the deeds of the hellfire and end up in the hellfire. So that shows us to be humble, that the Muslims should always be conscious and never believe that they've done enough ibadah, enough worship. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith shows us all those various stages and illustrates the time frame for us. 
Another benefit of this hadith, the Shaykh mentions, is that this hadith from it, because the Prophet ﷺ uh, articulated for us the stages of growth of a human being, that this gives the ulama the fiqh and the ability to derive ahkam related to uh, the period of time for the growth of the uh, child in the mother's stomach of when when it uh, the different stages that the the um, the child is in and when it actually uh, at what stage does it become a developed human being or have a soul and, and so forth which has to do with various uh, ahkam in the sharia this also illustrates for us the importance of the malaika and that the angels that they have various duties and that one of the one of the angels is sent to blow the soul into that morsel of flesh that becomes a human being and that's a part of the knowledge of the unseen that Ahl Islam believes in. Another <clears throat> benefit of this hadith is that this soul does not, uh, that the nafakh or the blowing of the soul does not happen until after four months. And another benefit of this hadith is that the this hadith illustrates for us that the ahkam al or the rulings pertinent to uh, the the new newly born child, if they die, if they are in this state after is after they have a soul. So the time before that, then that those rulings of of burial. And, you know, having the janazah and stuff would not be applicable because that does not have a soul yet. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith illustrates for us the importance of having iman in the qada and qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the divine decree of Allah azza wa jal. And another benefit of this hadith is that the life of the body is when it contains a soul. This hadith also illustrates for us the importance of tawakkal Allah that you have to put your trust in your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala who created you and that you're not guaranteed anything. You're guaranteed only those, you're guaranteed death and if you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, you haq at the tawheed, then you're guaranteed paradise. But that is if you die upon that. But if you die upon kufr or shirk, disbelieving in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or the major shirk, then you will reside in the hellfire forever. Wa'iyadhan billah, wa'iyakum min dhalik. Another benefit of this hadith is the importance, this hadith illustrates for us the importance of doing righteous deeds throughout our time uh, in this life. That we should not waste any of our time, and this is advice for myself and my brothers and sisters, that we should strive our entire life uh, to do righteous deeds, do those things which are pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking to draw nearer to Allah Azza wa Jal. This hadith also uh, should instill in us some sort of khawf min su al khatima, that some sort of fear of having a wicked ending, because we don't know. 
We don't know. And as we know, our Iman fluctuates. Sometimes our Iman is high. Sometimes our Iman is, is low. And we all sin, as the Prophet ﷺ said, Kulu ibn Adam khata'u khayran khata'ayin tawabun. The Prophet ﷺ said, all the children of Adam, they sin. And the best of those sinners is those who repent. So coming back to Allah often and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for ikhlas with the bad, you know, uh, sincerity to Him in, in, your, in your worship, and the bat, meaning firmness upon the sunnah and, and upon Islam. So we should always strive and make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those things and uh, not become lazy with regards to the akhirah. Another benefit of this hadith is, uh, as I just mentioned, supplicating often to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for thabat, to have your heart firmly upon Islam. You know, supplicate to Allah. If you feel weakness, uh, seek refuge in Allah. And seek refuge in Allah from the, the whisperings of the shaitan and from your own desires and supplicate to him for sincerity and firmness upon Islam and firmness upon the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And another benefit of this hadith is it illustrates for us that our, our deeds are in accordance with how we die. Meaning that if you died upon goodness, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you'll be resurrected with, those, uh, with, the, with that reward. But if you died on wickedness, then your outcome will be a reflection of that wickedness. Meaning that if you died on kufr and shirk, as we said, you'll be outside of the fold of Islam. If you died on the major sins, then you're tahta mashiyatillah. You're under, you're at the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If he wills, he will forgive you. If he wills, he will punish you and then take you out of the hellfire as a believer in him. Another last benefit of this hadith, and there's so many if we go back to the, the ulama from Ahlul Sunnah, from the Salaf up until the latter generations, but we'll just mention this last benefit, is that it shows us this hadith, illustrates for us the Taharat al mini that the, the purification of sperm, that sperm is pure. And this hadith illustrates for us because uh, we are not born from najasa. We are not born from najas, from, from filth. But rather, human beings come from that which is pure. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct from Allah azza wa jalla. Anything I said that was incorrect from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.